it's time to start our dive show at here at Ray Bay. So we're gonna ask everyone there to please sit down. We want everyone to see. If you want to stand, please stand in the back. We want everyone to see the rays get fed. So first of all, how is everyone doing today at the aquarium? your host today, although you all pay attention to Kyle in the tank, he's feeding our stingrays today. Wow. Everyone wave hi to Kyle, say hi, you can see us. <laughs> so he can hear us right now, but he's in the tank And as you can see, he are, he's feeding our stingrays right now. So we have four stingrays here at Ray Bay. The little ones you see, those are not baby stingrays, but those are cow nose stingrays. These little guys are adults, that's how big they get. They're called cow nose stingrays because that little bulb in front of their head kind of looks like a cow's nose. These little guys are very, very greedy. We call them the greedy little pigs in here. The best analogy is if think of it as a classroom and they're all the great threes and you're the guy delivering lunch. They will swarm you and fight you just to get the first bit of food. They will always not jump our divers, try to get every last morsel. <laughs> so if you see the big ones that he's just dancing with right now, those are our southern stingrays. Those are the big, flat, brown pancake ones you see that everyone loves to take a photo of. These are very grumpy, actually. And when we do feed our uh, cowbells down here, all the summers will swim upstairs to get the heck away. So in the classroom analogy, the summers are the teacher at the lunch bell. They will get the heck out of the classroom, go into the staff room and hide for the 30 minutes of peace that they get. So we also have the spotted eagle rays. These are my personal favorite. They look the coolest. So if you look right behind me there, the ones with the white polka dots on them, there's a beautiful shot for everyone. These are white spotted eagle rays. Those are beautiful. A lot of people say they have a dolphin's nose. That actually is their rostrum. So it's like a nose for them and it's very, very sensitive. What they do with that is they shove that into the sand in the wild and they'll use that to look for any food or anything that's hidden in the sand. Just so they can eat a little bit more. Very similar to our uh, candles. A little bit greedy but not too much. <laughs> so the last thing we have in here are rough tail stingrays. Those are the oldest and the heaviest stingrays in here. We have two rough tails. One is old. The oldest one is 26 years old. He's a lot older than a lot of people in the audience today. And the heaviest stingray, his name is Max, and he comes in at a whopping 226 pounds. So for a stingray that looks so squishy in the water, it's really, really heavy. He's one of our favorite stingrays here. Nice and big. So if you notice, the stingrays do dance with their divers and they will interact. Each stingray has a personality, they all have names, and they do know how to get the first bite of food. So our diver today, Kyle, is feeding them a mixture of mackerel and squid, a little bit of fish and a little bit of squid there, nice mixture for them. We feed them other things like herring, sometimes capelin, shrimp is one of their favorites as well. And they do also, they are very picky eaters. Sometimes if they don't like what they're eating, they'll spit it out, go back to the diver and wait for something else. Squid and shrimp are one of their favorites. So if you see them how they eat, they suck in their food. That's just like you or I when we suck in noodles. Very quickly like a vacuum cleaner for them. They do that just because that's how they eat in the wild. So they'll be a, a UFO. There is another UFO going right over something that they want to eat, like a crab or a lobster, and suck it up. And they'll use their teeth to crush the shell. So because they want to crush the shell, stingrays don't have sharp teeth. They don't have round teeth, they have flat teeth. Their teeth actually just look like a nail file for your eye. Very similar to that, and they use that to crush. Very, very powerful, and but they will not seriously hurt your finger or anything. Our divers get bit by the stingrays all the time, and they say it feels like a drawer closing on their finger. When you do go to touch our stingrays, though, do not worry, you will not get bitten. Our divers get bitten because they have to reach into that bucket to pull out the delicious mackerel or shrimp, and they get covered in fish oils. And sometimes, especially the cowboy stingrays, will think that these fingers covered in fish oil are delicious fishy sausages and will take a quick nip at them. So you're completely safe. 
So we can do a raw feed. That's where we put some fish along the glass, and the stingers will come up, suck that up. Let's just see what they look like. <laughs> But they do not have eyes down there, so it's really a game of chance for them. They just keep sucking in until they get something in their mouth. Their eyes are on the top of their bodies, and that helps them keep a look up. So it seems that they lay flat on the bottom of the ocean, so those eyes are looking forward up. <laughs> They have a mouth that looks kind of like a frowny face or a smiley face, depending on your mood when you see them. And all along their chest, what looks like the chest, that is their gills. That's how they breathe under the water. They use those to breathe. We have lungs, they have gills. So stingrays are called stingrays because of their sting. And everyone knows that they have a barb that's venomous, and that's how they use to defend themselves. So a quick show of hands, who's afraid for our diver that he might get stung today? Raise your hands. <laughs> There's like five people who are concerned for time. <laughs> so everyone who didn't raise your hand, don't worry, but everyone who did, bonus points for you guys. Our diver is completely safe in there, as you as are you when you touch them and are all the stingrays. Uh, we here at Ripley's we trim the barb off our stingrays, so that's just like cutting the toenail off. So it's completely fine for the stingrays, it won't hurt them, but it makes sure they won't sting each other or the diver or you. Barbs are not part of them, but it's a, it grows in grows on the tail. So think of it as like a bee sting, but it does grow back. So they use it as their last defense because when they do sting something with that barb, it takes three to six months for it to grow back. So think of it as that last bullet in your chamber. You do not want to use it on the first pop can you see. You want to save it for the last zombie. You do not want to pop it right away. So for them, they prefer to hide, they prefer to swim away, they do not want to sting you. So in, even if though in the wild, you're okay, just don't corner a stingray and they won't sting you. So another thing that we have in here that might be a potential danger are sharks. Who can see the sharks in here and look, who knows what kind of sharks they are? Shout it out loud. Hammerhead sharks. Everyone is very, very close. Those are not hammerheads, but they are called oh, sure. bonnet head sharks. Bonnet head sharks are the smallest member of the hammerhead family. So uh, think of as a cousin you all have who just never hit puberty and never had their growth spurt. They're just a short person in the family. So our, our bonnet heads in here, those are, that's our adult size. They won't grow any bigger than that. But who's afraid of the diver getting bitten by one of our sharks? Raise your hand up if you're afraid the diver will get bitten by the sharks. Yeah. Alright, even less people. Great. Our diver is in good hands today. So again, completely fine. Sharks do not want to eat humans. If you look at us, it's a lot of bone. We don't have a lot of meat on us. They much prefer to eat fat fish. Those are nice, and seals too. Seals have a lot of blubber and nice, nice fat reserves that sharks love to eat. We are way too bony for them, so they won't. So do not worry when you go upstairs to touch the stingrays, the sharks will not bite you. And if you touch our white spotted bamboo sharks, they will not bite you either. Sharks do not want to bite you. Sharks are friends. But we do have a rule upstairs that we do not touch the bonnet head sharks. And while that's a bummer for a lot of people, that is for a very good reason. Our bonnet head sharks are ram ventilators, which means to breathe, you need to force water through their gills. So if you look at it, they have that stupid expression on their face, like, duh, like that. They open their mouths, swim through the water, and that forces water through those gills. That's how they breathe. So if you touch them, you're slowing them down, and that slows water through their gill, and they can't breathe properly. So for the safety of our sharks, please do not touch them when you go upstairs. And if you see anyone else touching them, let them know, don't touch the sharks. But you might ask, are stingrays the same thing? And stingrays are not. They have spiracles. So if you take a close-up look at some of our stingrays, and right behind their eye, it looks like they have a hole in their head. 
Those are not ears, but those are called spiracles. And what those allow the stigma to do is, when it's on the floor, they can just use those to suck water in. So they don't need to ram water in, they can just suck water in through those folds on the top of its head, and that's how they breathe. So, uh, spiracle breathers and ram ventilators. So those are two different types of breathers we have in here. So one more thing, I want everyone to wiggle your nose for me. And then I want you to wiggle your ears. Now I want you to wiggle your leg. So I can wiggle my leg, but I can't wiggle my nose and ears. That's because my nose and ears and sharks and stingrays are made of something called cartilage. Cartilage is flexible, as you all felt. They're also, it's also lighter. So for sharks and stingrays, they can swim faster and they can make more uh, pinpoint turns when they chase something. Bone is great for us, it's nice, strong, and dense so we can stand up. But for them, it weighed them down too much and slowed them down. So these guys, stingrays and sharks, are part of the kind of called elasmo branches. That just means that they're made of cartilage, a little more flexible, pretty cool. Now, in the wild, sharks and stingrays are very, very endangered. How many sharks are killed each year? Who knows how many sharks are killed each year? Shout out the biggest number you know. One million! Keep going! Four people? Well, I mean, how many sharks are killed per year? But on this topic of sharks killing people, sharks do not kill people that, many, that uh, much per year. Each year, cows and vending machines kill more people than sharks. So, don't worry about sharks killing people. But Every year, 150 million sharks are killed by humans. 150 million. That's five times the population of Canada. That's the same thing. I don't think it's gonna grab this. 150 million sharks. That's crazy. That's bananas. Sharks are the top predators of a lot of ocean ecosystems. They control all the population of the fish down at the lower level. Without sharks, Everything would go out of control, and over enough time without sharks, ecosystems would collapse and there would be nothing left in the oceans. So sharks play a very, very important, important role. A lot of the times sharks are being killed for something called shark fin soup. Currently 75 million sharks are being killed for that alone, which is really, really bonkers. And a lot of the other sharks are killed by our fishing practices. We take big nets and just drag them along the ocean to get the fish that we want, but we also get a lot of bycatch. So that includes sharks and other great ocean creatures like sea turtles and dolphins sometimes. So that, so each time that we eat seafood, while it's healthy for us, really hurts the ocean. So if you want to do your part, here at Ripley's we have a program called Ocean Wise. We do that joint program with the Vancouver Aquarium, and it's a little guide, a paper guide, or an app on your phone, and it tells you what kind of seafood that you can buy is fresh and sustainably caught and done in a way that won't hurt sharks and preserve the ocean ecosystem for years to come and generations to come. So thank you everyone for listening to me rabble on about sharks. Please stick around if you want to see your daughter feed more sharks or you can head upstairs to touch the stingrays and sharks. If you have any questions about sharks and stingrays or just the aquarium in general, I'll stick around here after the show. Feel free to ask me anything. Thank you again everyone and have a great evening.